Welcome to my 100 pound weight loss journey. Today's topic Results Wednesday. And good morning. This is Ralph from my 100-pound weight loss journey. And a quick disclaimer before we get into today's topic. This is not medical advice. I am not a medical doctor. I am just some random dude giving my own personal experiences here online. If you are wanting to lose weight and feel great, uh, consult with a qualified medical practitioner for guidance. And don't just listen to some random dude on the internet. So with that out of the way, let's get into the, today's topic. And this is Results Wednesday. We're getting this podcast up on a Wednesday morning. And I'm not I'm practically doing this in real time on a Wednesday, too. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to report that I lost two pounds uh, since last Wednesday. I'm down to 262 pounds, and I lost one half inch of uh, belly fat. So yeah, my waist uh, measurement is now 50 inches. So yeah, really feeling good about the weight loss. It seemed like there for a while, the weight really wasn't coming off that fast. And now it's like, okay, I think we're kind of settling down into a pretty good pattern. And, uh, you know, that that is really one thing that I would want to say to anybody that is thinking about going on any kind of a diet, really. And if you're an older person, if you've been doing dieting before, you may reach a point where your metabolism is just so slow it may take your body a little bit of time to get adjusted to the new diet and to begin losing weight. I know that's that's what happened in my experience here with this latest diet. First week, I lost, what was it? I forget, about five pounds. I mean, really good results. And then second week, third week, fourth week, it was like, I wasn't losing any weight at all. But uh, what kept me going is that, you know, I I knew that I'd been trying to do diets before. I had been doing some yo-yo weight loss before. And I knew there was a good chance that my metabolism was just, well, shall we say, broken. And might require a little bit of time to adjust to the new routine and uh, start giving me the weight loss that I was really desiring. And the other thing that kept me going is just looking in the mirror. And I could see, looking at my belly fat, that I was making progress. I was looking better when I looked at myself in the mirror. And even if the scale measurement didn't really seem to change much, you know, day to day or week to week, I could see a definite improvement in the mirror. And so that's where I've really come to rely not just on the scale, but also on the measuring tape. Because sometimes the scale doesn't tell the whole story. You have to measure your waist and and just see, are you shrinking around the middle? And if you're shrinking around the middle, but you're not losing weight, at least according to the scale, that still is good news because... You know, for those of us guys that have developed a pretty big spread around the middle, uh, losing that belly fat, I think, is important. Uh, again, you know, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. But what I have heard from other people that are doctors is that that belly fat, especially for us guys, is pretty dangerous and could be an indication of things like you know, fatty liver. And, uh, you know, if you've been packing a lot of fat around your liver, uh, that is an unhealthy state to be in too. So losing that weight around the middle 
even if it doesn't feel like you're losing weight according to the scale, if you're losing that fatty weight around the middle, that is good progress. And so, yeah, uh, that's what really kept me going, is just looking at the scale and on weeks that the scale didn't really seem to move that much, I'd use the measuring tape and, and see that, well, at least the measuring tape is shrinking. <laughs> so, well, the belly is shrinking. So if the weight doesn't seem to be coming off that fast, that's okay. And another thing that I am a little bit concerned about and something that this slower rate of weight loss is affording me is that I am a little concerned about the possibility of a lot of loose skin after losing a lot of pounds. But uh, if you're doing it a little bit uh, on the slow side, I think, you know, your skin's got a little bit of a chance to kind of make the adjustment too. So, yeah, I'm hoping with losing like two pounds a week, uh, that's, you know, I won't be plagued with a lot of skin issues after losing 50 pounds or 100 pounds. And my ultimate goal here is to lose 100 pounds. And uh, I was originally thinking, you know, it'd be nice to do it by the end of the year 2022. But if it takes a little bit longer than that, hey, I'm I'm game. I'm still going for it. And, uh, you know, as the main thing is just getting back into good health. You know, looking good is one thing. Feeling good is another thing. But actually being in good health, you know, that is priceless. And I didn't realize how priceless a gift that was until I started realizing how badly my physical health had declined over the past few years of just sitting around doing nothing and being a home-based entrepreneur and not really getting a whole lot of physical activity in. So, you know, this year I've been working on reversing all of that. So now for the rest of the podcast, I got a couple of questions that came up. Had two people ask uh, different questions. First question, how hard is it to adjust to either keto or carnivore or a carnivore-ish type of a diet? And in the beginning, I thought this was going to be easy. I thought, I love meat. I love cheese. I love uh, all the dairy products. And I thought that adjusting to a keto or carnivore type diet was going to be easy, no problems. But, you know, then the uh, sugar cravings began to kick in and I was used to having a lot of variety in my meals. We would eat a lot of rice, we'd eat some beans, we'd have different fruits and vegetables and You know, a lot of times I'd cook up a meat dish and mix a lot of veggie in there, a lot of pasta. Oh, my God, spaghetti, you know, all that stuff, Uh, tomato sauce thrown in, all that good stuff that I would later find out that half of it was trying to kill me. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, once I just made set my mind that, okay, I'm going to do this thing and just get used to eating differently, uh, it, 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 it began to kick in. But the first couple of months, really, for me, were kind of a challenge. And I think one thing that helped me was uh, trying to be creative, looking for new uh, keto and carnivore recipes online and find out different ways that you could use uh, eggs and cheese and meat and throw them together with maybe a little bit of sauce that uh, uh, didn't break a keto or carnivore diet. And uh, another thing that really helped me, and this is a book by Dr. Paul Saladino, The Carnivore Code. In that book, uh, he lists different tiers of the carnivore diet. And uh, one of those tiers does allow the inclusion of a few 
low carb, uh, low oxalate uh, vegetables and and fruits that you can add into your diet to kind of make it a little bit easier to adjust. He he notes in his book that the the hunter gatherers that uh, he was uh, privileged to stay with and uh, and eat with uh, over the course of his life that they would not just eat meat, but occasionally they would add in a few uh, berries, a few fruits, a few nuts that they would gather in the wild and include that in some of their meals. So, you know, you, you, if you don't want to do like a strict carnivore, if you feel like you do want a little bit of extra variety, you know, you can go ahead and do uh, a, a different tier of the carnivore diet and include a few non-sugary, non-starchy, uh, low-oxalate uh, fruits and, and, and vegetables and uh, maybe a few nuts and berries. But don't go overboard on it. Just add that in as a little bit of extra flavor, a little bit of extra variety. But yeah, you don't have to make the transition, you know, that fast. Like, that was my mistake, I think, in the beginning. I just, one day I was eating a normal American diet. The next day I was carnivore, total carnivore. And yeah, it was a little dicey making that adjustment. And part of that, the reason why it was a little dicey for me uh, will be answered in the next question. But uh, yeah, it took me a couple of months to really feel like I made the adjustment. But now that I'm three months into this new lifestyle, and that's you know one thing about keto or carnivore diet, this is not just a fad diet. Uh, it's not just a diet. It is a lifestyle change. And that's the one thing that is helping me uh, develop the mindset where I'm going to be losing the weight, but not just losing the weight, maintaining my weight once I get down to a healthy, uh, healthy uh, place on the uh, on the weight scale. So uh, yeah, not just a dietary change, but a lifestyle change, and it 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 did take a little bit of time to adjust to it. But once you make that adjustment, once I've made that adjustment, you know, it, it just seems a whole lot easier. But it took time. So if you're trying to make this adjustment, give it time. Be patient and uh, just give yourself the time you need to make the adjustment to either a keto lifestyle or a carnivore lifestyle, whatever your choice is. Uh, second question, how are the sugar cravings? And yeah, that's really what made it a little difficult for me in the beginning was the sugar cravings. Uh, not just uh, it, it wasn't just a case of feeling like I was getting bored with the carnivore diet or doing a you know keto or ketovore uh, type diet. It was the sugar cravings that made it a little bit more difficult too. And I really just had to get to a point where I had to ask myself, what is more important, getting back into good health or giving in to those sugar cravings and, you know, just going out and getting a chocolate Easter bunny? <laughs> this is, uh, man, it seems like I do a lot of this stuff at the worst time of the year. When I gave up drinking 16 years ago, I gave up drinking over the Christmas holidays. When everybody was, say, doing the eggnog, doing the drinking, making merry, and I was sitting at home in a snowstorm, uh, white knuckling it, <laughs> and and now you know, 16 years later, I'm I'm not giving up alcohol. I've already done that, but I'm giving up sugar and carbohydrates, and I'm finding out that that is like another addiction in itself. And I'm doing it at a time when, you know, people are getting ready for Easter. The candies are all out there in the stores. And the stuff that I used to just, you know, knuckle under and, 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 and eat, 
uh, chocolate Easter bunnies, the uh, uh, the jelly beans, uh, things like that. Uh, they're, they're just looking me in the face right now, but fortunately, I'm, I've reached a point where I can just look at those things in the store and smile and, and remember, yeah, those are the things that I used to indulge in uh, during the past Easter seasons, but those are no longer things that I have to eat now. And uh, I, I do feel like I... I being honest with myself, I really do feel like I had reached a point where I was addicted to sugar and I was addicted to carbohydrates. And uh, right now I've got the mindset that I am going to be more addicted to good health than I am to sugar and carbs. So again, you know, that took me a couple of months to really get to that point where I I really felt confident that I am on the right path, that this is what I need to do, and I am going to stick to it. But, you know, I I just had to give it time for my body to adjust, to kind of get over the sugar cravings, because, you know, looking back, my own experience of kicking alcohol addiction... Uh, in in that case, I had to give it a couple of months until I, I began to feel like, yeah, I can handle these cravings. I still need to be working a program of recovery, and I still need to be developing a different lifestyle so I can adjust to new ways of, of handling old stresses and new ways of thinking, new ways of behaving. And uh, once I once I made that adjustment and figured out different things that I could do to handle the cravings, different things I could, uh, different ways of living, different patterns of living that I could use to uh, see me through difficult times, difficult periods, and be able to get through it without a drink. Uh, once I developed those different living patterns, things began to fall into place and. Everything went well. And I've had to go through the same process when it comes to handling the sugar cravings and just admitting that, you know, for a long, long time there, I was addicted to sugar. I was addicted to carbs. And I don't have to be addicted anymore. I can now just say to myself, okay, uh, you're going to be addicted to good health. And that's your job from now on. (laughs) Be focused on good health. Getting back into good health. Maintaining good health. And just taking care of your health for the rest of my life. That's, That's what I tell myself. And so, yeah, the sugar cravings, they're a lot better now. They were, you know, kind of rough in the beginning. And that's that's just the way it goes. The, these cravings, uh, they can be pretty rough in the beginning, depending on, you know, how badly addicted you have become to sugar, to carbohydrates, how stuck in your ways you are. We all fall into certain patterns of eating, patterns of of behavior, and old patterns can be hard to break. But when you start to see the payoff, you know, better health and feeling better and and you begin to realize that you can adopt new ways of living, new ways of looking at the world and new ways of dealing with things, then it does seem to fall into place. At least it did for me. And now, yeah, three months in, I've got the confidence that I can do this thing. I can go all the way. I've got how many more pounds to go? About 62 more pounds to drop. Actually, a little bit more than that because my target weight is to get back down to about 175 pounds. That was my high school weight. So, yeah, I've got a ways to go. Currently at 262, and at my worst, I was 300 pounds. So, uh, yeah, looking at my progress now, I am encouraged. And, yeah, I'm just going to 
stay focused, uh, stay committed, do this thing, and uh, and just you know keep going on. And if I can do, if I can lose that 100 pounds and get down to my target weight of 175 by the end of this year, that will be great. But if for some reason my body is telling me, hey, slow down a little bit, I think it's wise to listen to one's body, work with it rather than against it, work with nature rather than against nature, and just let it take as long as it is going to take. And uh, just be willing to see it through no matter what. So that's where I'm at right now. Now, before I end this podcast, I do want to give a resource that I have found extremely useful. Uh, one guy that I found on YouTube, he's a doctor, and he goes by the handle carb addiction doc he's got a lot of good videos on youtube about sugar addiction carb addiction he verifies from his own medical experience that yes this is a straight up legit addiction a silent addiction that a lot of people suffer from but you know we don't talk about it because sugar and carbohydrates are just so widely accepted that, uh, you know, so what if you're addicted to sugar? Just go ahead and pop the top and eat all the Pringles you want to, and eat all the sugary cereals you want to, have that ice cream. And, I mean, that's really what our society seems to be telling us. You know, sugar is okay. If you're addicted to it, that's fine. We'll forgive you. But once you start seeing the damage that it's doing to your body and other aspects of your life, you begin to see the wisdom in kicking that carb addiction. And if you are reaching this conclusion for yourself, like like I have over the last three months, a good resource on YouTube that will help you through this phase of your recovery is Carb Addiction Doc. He's a great guy. Uh, Check him out on YouTube and see what you think. But a lot of good material on that channel. So, that's all for now. Thanks for dropping by. Until later, you know, take care of yourself. Uh, Try to stay focused on good health. And we will talk to you in upcoming podcasts. Take care.